He's here. I can feel him. The blade must ever feed if her edge is to remain keen. Butcher. What care you for these worthless creatures? They are nothing. Weak from the moment of their conception, ever longing for power not theirs to command, they turn unfailingly upon themselves. Like sheep. They roam in filthy flocks, eager to trample those few gifted a fleece of gold. Or that they might feel contentment with their pitiful existence. Prejudice and persecution, severance and strife, every earthly wrong springs from the malice in men's hearts. Malice born of the pain and suffering that is free will. Its corruption is gnawed at your being from the very moment of your birth. You're wrong. It is no corruption. It is who I am. Every choice I make, right or wrong, gives me reason to carry on. And carry on I shall. Not as a puppet, but as a man. Which are you? <laughs> there was a time I too thought those the only choices. What? Long ago, God granted man the gift of magic. And with that gift did he build great civilizations. Yet over time, man lost sight of the gift's true meaning, stepping from the path of shared prosperity to one of avarice. He abandoned his creator for sword and flame, and through his folly, beckoned the blight. Yet, there were those few who refused to turn their eyes from the heavens, and they prayed to God that he might lead them back to righteousness. And the Lord, he did answer. Before the worthy shall the gates of paradise open, and so did I spread my arms to the ether, and cast my soul upon its gentle waters. I gave myself unto him. The Lord charged me thus. If your kind are to find salvation, they must be made to serve. You see, paradise lies but a single step away. Could we only take it? Could we only leave our transgressions behind? For none save the pure of heart and mind may set foot in the new world. I will save us. But it all begins and ends with you. You are the key, Mythos. And with this humble offering, 
Shall I prove my faith once more? So you forsook your kingdom. You forsook yourself to serve. Tell me, how is that living? What you seek to provide is not salvation. It's anything but. Life is about always having a choice. Take that away, and we might as well be dead. <laughs> Very well. Come then. Show us the strength of your will. It's not the strength of my will that should worry you. But the weakness of yours. If you think your will the stronger, prove it. By this day's end, you shall know the truth. notion of hope when there is none.
yourself with us. You will not defeat me otherwise. We'll see. Perhaps you still require persuasion. Truth, Barnabas. We are not as weak as your God believes. of your weakness. <laughs> My apologies.
You are not the fool I took you for. And so it ends. No! <laughs> Don't tell me you are tired, Mythos! Your stubborn defiance has stirred my long becalmed heart, filling it with a joy that I have not known for generations! I had thought the tantalizing kiss of self-indulgence, a dream forever out of reach. And now that its sweet ruin courses through my veins, I shall not be quick to relinquish it. Show me your work, Mythos, that I might revel in it! I am yours, 
is at an end. And we both know the truth. It is I who stand victorious. My will that prevailed. Your will? No. It was his. Clive Rossfield. There is strength in will. Would that I had not relinquished my own. <laughs> Strive for a new world. Strive to win your master's approval. I... You were shown a fantasy, and you chose to believe it. But you were wrong. There is no world but the one we live in. And that world... That world is worth saving, even if it means killing a god. Just as the Lord's Mother Crystals have fulfilled theirs. Come, Clive Rossfield. Take what is rightfully yours. Become one with God. No.
tell me, how does it feel? Show yourself! Face me! How does it feel to consume your rival's strength? To gorge yourself on their being? To edge step by trembling step ever closer to the divine? With or without a will, you are still but a vessel, our vessel. Behold, how your body shudders in anticipation of its fate. Oh, it's not yours yet. No. Come then, O oh wayward child. We shall await you upon the back of the first worm. There all shall end and begin again. Same mind! 
I fight for the opposite. You fight for a world in which you shouldn't have to live and die for nothing. And, and he fights today to give us all the chance of a better tomorrow. Be that as it may, a handful of men cannot stand against the kingdom. Then mayhap they are the wrong men. Well, I'll be damned. Our numbers are few, but I shall rally as many of my dragoons as I'm able. You, apprise the Lord Strategist of the state of the city's defenses. Yes, Your Radiance. And you would fight alongside us. I owe the Phoenix a debt. <laughs> Does this vouch for my nephews? Aye, but I still have my doubts about you. Which we can discuss later. Indeed. You said you had men garrisoned in the keep. Captain, do you know how many yet remain? Allow me to confirm. Commander? Whatever their number, Randalar will be needed. Gather the them bodies all. and build a pyre in the courtyard. Quickly. Terence. My lord. You will find a girl there. A girl? We are in the middle of a war. I owe her my life. And I always pay my debts. You are to see that she is provided for. Dion, I cannot leave. But you shall. If I am ever to be worthy of the forgiveness of our people, then I must earn it. And I must earn it by my hand, and my hand alone. Know that I do not ask this lightly. And know that I will do it. Farewell, Terence. Clive, thank fuck. You all right? I am. But I'm a damn sight better for seeing you, Joshua. And Barnabas. The king is dead. They are, but so is their killer. He can't hurt anyone anymore. You're safe.
Gav. We need to talk. I'm sorry, Clive. You know I want nothing more than to go with you. I do. But I'm glad you're heading back to the Enterprise nonetheless. And not just for Edda's sake. Our people need to know what happened here. You can count on me. As can she, I hope. Thank you, me lords. Do you think that was wise? Wiser than leaving a woman with child alone in the Deadlands. They'll be safer at the hideaway. For now, at least. This land is overrun with Akashic. The king himself was long-termed, albeit by choice. All to serve Ultima, in his damnable quest to forge the perfect vessel. The chaos Barnabas wreaked upon nation after nation. How many were killed for this? Ah. Oh, he didn't consider it killing. Or a mercy of sorts. A way to end their suffering. He truly wanted to save mankind, and ultimately use that. As he uses us. But why us? What are we? What are we? We are dominance. That is our fate. But that doesn't mean we have to accept it, which is why we fight. For the right to deny it. Is that not so? It is. For our sins. Barnabas said something else. That the Mother Crystals were Ultimas. Ultimas? Are you certain? We know that the Mother Crystals have been leading the land of Ether. And we also know that it's this which hastens the spread of the Blight. But what I cannot fathom is what Ultima stands to gain from that. What did you find at the Stronghold? The truth about Ultima's prize. For so long, I believed it to be you, and you alone. Yet, it is not merely a fruit that he desires, but a fruit and phoenix both. That which we became in the skies over Twinside. Only when the twin flames are joined, shall his vessel be complete. Quite why he needs a vessel is another question. Unless... There is something he cannot achieve without one. Something his immaterial form precludes. Something requiring an unthinkable amount of ether and a body resilient enough to channel it. If I did not know better, brother, I would think that he meant to cast a spell. A spell a thousand years in the making. A spell to end all spells. And he cannot do it without us. Nor without the Mother Crystals. But if we destroy them all... ...we will stop not only the Blight... ...but Ultima as well. We stick to the plan then. Only this time... ...we face him together. Well, 
It's a long walk to stone here. Let's not keep Ultima waiting. <laughs>